Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Mice 365. Today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to investigate and respond to threats coming from the Microsoft 365 Defender product offerings. I've mentioned this in other videos, but Microsoft is correlating alerts across Defender for Identity, Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Office 365, and Cloud App Security to provide aggregate incidents here that you can use that has a lot of automation capabilities to correlate these events from across identities, emails, devices, and applications. So clicking into an incident here, I can see a lot of information initially about the scope of this impact and the complete attack chain from all these incidents that may have been coming from the various services under Defender. So one of the biggest things here that you'll wanna do, I would say, is really evaluate the team you have that can respond to these particular threats or investigate them because you can delegate a lot of work within this portal. One of the first things you may want to do is go into this graphical view and actually play this attack story out so you can see a full list of the activities going on and get a better idea about scope of the incident from more of a visual cue. And that can help you then to take your next steps and who you want to investigate or what device you want to investigate within your organization. I would also go into the investigation section here so that you can see the automated investigations that were run to not duplicate efforts. And in some cases, these investigations are remediating certain incidents for you, whereas others are just performing assessments and maybe giving you an action to take to remediate that incident. So I can click into here and I can see more information about this investigation. And within this page, I can go in and I can actually see all the log history of what this service was doing in an automated fashion. So I may want to check all of this out before investigating these particular alerts that are composing this particular incident. I can also click into these alerts as well too, and I can go ahead and see more information about this alert. What I'd recommend also with these incidents is either coming in and classifying it as a true or false alert. This helps with the machine learning capabilities of the service. And additionally, you can see a lot of the recommendations here if you're not familiar with the particular alert and what to do in this particular use case. Additionally, I would go ahead and make comments in this particular section. So if you have other members of your team coming in to look at this attack timeline or look at this particular alert, they have a history of what you've been doing as well. Back on the main investigation page here, we can click into certain devices or users. If I click into the devices section here, I can see the devices that were impacted here. And if you've integrated uniquely with the information protection service, you can see data sensitivity on that computer as well. So clicking into these devices here, I have some remediation activities as well that I can take from an action standpoint. I can see more information about this device. I could see if there's any type of vulnerabilities on that device. And I can additionally take actions to perform against that device, like being able to isolate it off the network, restricting app execution, running an antivirus scan, or maybe even a live response session if I want to gather more telemetry here than what's within the admin console. So a lot of information can be done from here as well too against devices. And then clicking back in, I can also go under the user section here of this incident. And I can see a lot of information about these users, but one important piece is this investigation priority, which is coming from the identity services that are part of the cloud app security and the Defender for Identity services as well too. So I can click into the here and I can see a little bit more information about this user. And this may decide what my priority is for a time perspective in investigating this user. I could then go to a user page and I can take more actions against this user, like being able to block their account, confirm that they are actually a compromised user, or going about other methods of making sure that they sign in again as well from this particular session. The action center over here on the left hand side is where you can see any pending actions from the automated investigations that have been going on that you can approve, you know, get notifications about that. As well as the history here you can see of any sessions that you've conducted. In this case, I've run a bunch of live response commands against certain computers within my environment here. So I have a complete history of that. Other times there may be automated remediation incidents that I've done and I may want to roll that back, like putting files back into place, for instance. The Threat and Vulnerability Management Dashboard is another great location to investigate threats and vulnerabilities across your organization. 
You can go into the recommendation section here and you can see all the recommendations and scope as far as the exposed devices. One thing I'd recommend doing is slowly chipping away at this list over time. They do allow you to see more information and this is clearly a high impact incident with a zero day vulnerability that's been discovered here. And I can choose to respond to that or create a new request for my organization because there's no known uh, patches at this point in time for that, but they give you some remediation activities. You can request that remediation, which would open up a ticket with your team and you can include that within the endpoint manager admin center. You could also add exceptions to these, and in this case for the zero day, you probably didn't want to do that, but there are some cases in which you're going to take on a exception because of a justification, and that could be a third party control, could be an accepted risk. So this is at least documenting the recommendations within the portal. Ultimately, you're going to try to perform as many of these recommendations that allows for within your organization without inhibiting productivity or some other type of um, interoperability you have going on with the mix of the software and applications in your organization. So ultimately you're gonna to try to bump down this exposure score over time with that information. The final section I wanted to showcase for threat investigation and response is related to the Defender for Officer 65 section here under email and collaboration. I've shown this in previous lessons, but I just quickly wanted to touch on it again here. The Explorer section is where you can search and perform queries against your environment for malware or phishing events in the organization. And within here, you could also track common campaigns against your users and identify the events that are occurring based off of those, like URLs that were clicked, for instance, for phishing events, or the opportunities that were taken out because they were quarantined within your organization or ones that were overridden from a URL click standpoint. So you have a lot of information that you can do here and save them as queries, which then can be added into some triggers for automated investigation events as well too, that you can perform, which does a more thorough analysis of things in the attendant like forwarding rules present, mailbox delegation rights, uh, behavioral history, and things like that that really give you a better picture. That's all coming from the Defender service in an automated fashion versus you doing that manually with PowerShell or just traversing through admin centers. So it's a really great experience. That's everything that I wanted to showcase for you guys in today's lesson. Stay tuned for my next lesson where we'll be walking through some of the key benefits for Microsoft 365 Defender. Thanks guys, have a great day.